Okay. So, of course, this is Joyce. Joyce is one of the, the filmmakers on um, Quali TV. She has a great documentary called Dancing Like Home. I hear an echo, Joyce. I'm not sure if you hear that. Do you hear the echo? No, I don't hear an echo. Okay. okay you maybe still hear it? it? Yeah, it, it may be just on my end, but um, it's okay. I just wasn't sure if other people could hear it. That was my main concern. Okay, um, we'll try the plugs and see if that's much better. Okay. I mean, why why you do that again? Is that um, better? Um, yes, it, it was it's awesome. Totally awesome. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's great because, yeah, we were doing, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, again, this is Joyce. She is the, the director of Dance Like Home. And, really, and producer and narrator and, <laughs> you know, everything. Writer really, and all that good stuff. Exactly. You did a lot with this particular. And what's one thing people don't realize, you know, for a lot of independent filmmakers, you do end up doing a lot of a lot of the work yourself. You do, yeah. Right. So talk to me about the journey to do this documentary. When I was watching, I wasn't sure if you initially set out to do the documentary or you traveled to Africa and then it's like, wow, this could be a great documentary can, or, or you were just documenting your travels and it became a documentary. No, no, no. I did. Uh, I set out for it. Uh, I mean, I because I had gone to Africa in 1996 and from there I made a theater piece out of that. And so from there I wanted to do a film. And so when I went to uh, because I wanted to do a film, but I didn't know a lot about the cosmos. So I decided to go for a location scout. And so when I went for the location scout, it was just to get permission from the village chiefs to come back to film. And so I took my producer and my other producer and my dance teacher and my uh, cinematographer. Mm -hmm. And so from there, you know, we, jo we documented our journey of going to the villages to try to get permission. And, you know, we happened to luck up on a couple of the ceremonies. And so when I came back, you know, then it was time to raise money, you know, for the actual film. And it was really, really hard to raise those funds to do the, the hour long piece. And so from there, I said, you know, I have a story, you know, from the journey that I made with my with my other four filmmakers and just that journey of getting permission from the chiefs to come back. And so that's how this 30 minute, 30 minute film evolved. And oh, so, wow. Um, oh, wow. Right. So it did. Uh, it was the preliminary of the documentary, <laughs> but it wasn't the documentary I went to shoot but it ended up being the film that you'll, you will see. And it's, you know, much more interesting. And because, you know, again, sometimes in documentary films, uh, the film kind of tells you as opposed to you tell the film, you know, what's going to happen. Right. Right. Um, yeah. So that's what, what happened in this piece. Yeah, right. It's, it's a documentary. You kind of said, okay, I want to talk about this particular story, but it's, it's, exactly. it's real life. So real life yes, sets in, and, it's, and <laughs> exactly. another story kind of evolves. Evolved you know. exactly from there. Yeah, mm -hmm. that that's totally awesome. So um, I've never been to Africa, which I kind of blabbed about earlier. Um, and you talked about you know going to Africa for the first time. I remember you mentioned in a documentary that you know you don't change Africa. Africa changes you. How how did Africa yes. change you? Through, through through the process of the the documentary and just being there in general. Well, you know, it's interesting because when I went there for the first time and I actually met the Jola people who were in this film and I had the chance to dance with those women for the first time, it was almost like a rustic ceremony for me because it was like I moved into this another another uh, stage of womanhood. Mm -hmm. And it completely grounded me as a person. Uh, it, uh, you know, it changed my whole perspective on life. I mean, it made it, uh, you know, uh, it just made it more well-rounded and balanced. And I was, like I said, I became more focused. You know, I know I knew the direction I wanted to go in life itself. Um, so it changed my life in a tremendous way. You know, I, I, you know, again, just being in Africa itself, it was almost like my rite of passage mm -hmm. into becoming a woman. So I, I wouldn't change that for the world.
Yeah. In the documentary you mentioned too about going there, not really having the first time, you know, you didn't really have an itinerary. You know, sometimes people go on trips right. and they have things planned out and they, right, they go with the group right. and, you know, these right. planned activities. But you, you went there just, you know, seeing what yeah, you find. Me, <laughs> right. Me and two other friends, the first time I went, it was because, again, like we were all dancers. We all studied African dance and we decided to go just to go. And, uh, you know, just this, I mean, for me, it was kind of like, you know, I want to go, I want to see if we have, you know, every once in a while, you know, maybe we'll find some dance. But for me, it was just to see what it was like to be in the continent. Mm -hmm. And we were there for a month and we went to Guinea wow, and okay. Gambia and Mali and Senegal. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience. It was an adventure. And uh, again, that we had no agenda. And again, it was one of the best things I've ever have done in my life because it took me on this path, mm -hmm. you know, of, you know, self-discovery. It uh, took me on this path of becoming a filmmaker, you know, mm -hmm. which is something I've always wanted to do. But I thought I was going to, I thought my first film was going to be a narrative film and I had no idea it would be a documentary film, mm -hmm. you know. So it took me into a whole other arena that I never thought I wanted to be in that direction, but I'm glad that I did um, because, you know, like you, said, like you said, documentary films is life. It's real life. Mm -hmm. And uh, and again, just like the documentary film, they dic in a sense, they dictate you. You have this idea of mm -hmm. what your project is going to be, but it sometimes it takes you in a whole other direction. And that's the part that's exciting about doing a documentary film. Right. And, and, and you can, I can see that in the documentary. I mean, even <laughs> like you talked about some of your fears, you know, the second time you went oh, especially exactly. in Senegal, which, you know, we think about it, you know, a lot of people want to go to Africa, but people are afraid, you know, of some things. And there was some, yes. some conflict going on when you were there at exactly. that time. Right. Yeah, there mm -hmm. was a, uh, which is still kind of going on. It was like a low level conflict between the Senegalese government and the people, I mean, well, a rebel faction in Senegal. And so, um, you know, my teacher had assured me, it's like, listen, just like, you know, you'll be fine because, you know, the rebels, they know who's coming into that region and I'm a native of that region, so you'll be fine. But again, that doesn't erase away your fears because, I mean, people were killed, you know, right. not a few people, but lots of people were killed. And so... Mm -hmm. um, by that fact, I mean, I didn't tell my mother, I didn't tell my family what was going on because they had no idea. They just thought I was, you know, okay, Joyce is taking another adventure. And so, right. um, <laughs> but if um, they would have known, my mom would be like, no, you're not. Oh, you're not no, I'm, exactly. If I would have told my mother, just like, I'm telling you, she would have blocked the door of the plane. Right. <laughs> you know, she would have let me go. And I would have felt so guilty if I would have told, if I told her, you know, right. about the conflict that was going on. But, you know, after a couple of days, because it felt, and I mean, that's the part of the name of the film, Dancing Like Home, I actually felt mm -hmm. like I was home because it felt so much like being in Alabama in Montgomery, where I'm from. Right. Yeah, you, you yeah. mentioned that, the dirt roads. And maybe think, too, like, um, I've never really been to Alabama before until this year. Well, when I was oh, okay. in eighth grade, I went to like, I went to like Birmingham for like a day, like to do a two and eighth grade, but I really hadn't been back to actually visit like be there for more than like a couple of hours like we right. were there for in thanksgiving um uh, from my husband's um, father moved there when he retired and i did see dirt roads like his family lives in a very small town and exactly. when i saw the dirt roads when you're talking about in africa i was like wow it, right. it did you know resemble being there minus the whole boat trip and having to help with the right. boat exactly. Exactly. Like, oh my yeah, god but it I, does i'm serious i mean the <laughs> weather you know the 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 temperature the dirt roads i mean my family mm -hmm. they live in mount meigs which is like mm -hmm. the country you know in uh, uh uh you know it's all the way in the country in alabama and just like you know you see chickens you know going <laughs> by and you know you see you know so it's, it was it was like i was in alabama right <laughs> and just like and it was just you know at a certain point you just felt that hominess and that comfortableness because mm -hmm. the people were very, very welcoming. Right. And, yeah. and, and I mean, of course, the documentaries about dancing, one of the things that I didn't realize was the fact that dancing was like a language. It's like Africa. It's like a what? 
like a language, like, you know, it's, it's Oh, definitely. It's, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's like a language. I mean, the steps are like a language. I mean, it's just not, oh, let's just dance. No, they, those, they're, because they're ceremonies and those mm -hmm. ceremonies have meaning. Uh, the, the ceremony that I have in the film, uh, it's a harvest dance ceremony. You know, when the, the women come from the fields and they have rice and they have, you know, other things that they plant it, then they, there's the dance that celebrates the harvest. And so a lot of those ceremonies are not just, oh, we're right. going to dance. I mean, you have to have the ceremonies when the girls are circumcised, when the boys are circumcised, when a woman can't have a baby mm. and they have a ceremony for that, you know. Um, you know, so a lot of those uh, dances mm -hmm. are language and they're saying something to us. If you understand the language, right. Right. And, and, and right, right. And, and I mean, I knew that it, there was some probably some type of meaning, but I mean, as I was mentioned earlier before you came on, it's the fact I took like right. African dance years ago and it was like West, you know, West African dance. So I assumed that the entire <laughs> right. half of, you know, the continent, right. Right. they were all doing the same dances when in reality, each country, maybe even each village might have their own interpretation of the dance. I mean, were you aware of all that before well, you went kind to, of, because, you, you know, when there? taking, um, you know, from studying uh, the dance, because it's like you have some really great teachers, you know, who will tell you, because before, you, you know, you had the Caucasians that came in and divided, you know, Africa, especially in that region of Senegal and, you know, Mali, you know, where there were no borders, just like, you know, some of those dances mm -hmm. in different places in those regions, they have different names, but some of the steps are the same because a lot of uh, the people, they would migrate to different villages and sometimes they would marry, you know, another person from a different village and bring those ceremonies to, mm -hmm. to each village. So you might say, for instance, the dance in my film, it's called Bugrabu. It could be called Bugarabu in mm -hmm. Senegal, but that same dance might have a different name in Guinea. I'm sorry, in um, Gambia. You know, but it's the same okay. ceremony, but because it's in a different uh, area of Senegal and now in Gambia, it has a different name. So a lot of those, uh, like in, even in Guinea, just like you have some dances in Guinea, that look like the dances in Senegal, but they're called to totally different names now. You know, so, so you have that kind of cross pollinization mm. because a lot of those tribes, they were moving from place to place. Um, you know, so in a sense, right. yes, I was aware. I mean, I'm no, I know more about it because, you know, since I came back, it's like I've just been, you know, a fanatic about learning to dance. But some of those things I did know before I, you had gone to Senegal for that second time to do the film. And then speaking, you know, similarities, uh, you talk about, you know, your love for dance and, and just the fact that like your mom loved to dance. And it, as, a, as a people, I think as people, you know, especially African-Americans, yes. I mean, we love to dance as well. And I feel like that's all a connection between dancing when you were over there versus, you know, how we connect. Oh, the definitely, people because I just America. remember, I, you know, the way that I open up the, the, the film is that, you know, when I was little, we used to, you know, we would go see our relatives in D.C. and we used to dance in a circle. And it's like, you know, somebody would get in the circle oh. and whoever would dance the best, they would get a quarter, a nickel and the whole thing. So when I started uh, taking African dance class, uh, after the end of a class, that's what happens. You know, everybody gets in a circle and a person mm -hmm. gets in the middle of the circle and they do a solo. I mean, you don't get you don't get a quarter or a nickel, all that stuff. I mean, you just do that solo. So I went, <laughs> my goodness, I mean, this is the same mm -hmm. thing that was basically happening when I was a kid. Just like you dance in the circle, somebody would jump in, you know, uh, you would jump in the middle and do your, you know, the monkey or the swim or whatever, you know, dance was happening at that time. And your aunt or your uncle would give you a quarter. And the same thing happens after each dance class in the West African dance uh, class. You, after, you know, you do your steps and after class, you form a circle and people get in the middle and they do a solo. 
So as I call it, it's like cultural okay, wow. memory. That those types of things, which I call mm -hmm. it's also part of our ritual, they don't leave us. They're part of our culture. It's like the soul train. I mean, because I even equate the soul yes. train line the same thing. It's yeah. like, you know, it's not a circle, but you know, mm -hmm. everybody comes down and they do their little dance and they do their solo and they move on. It's something mm -hmm. that I think it's inherent in us. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Another thing that I thought was really interesting about the documentary, you yes. mentioned how the women worked really hard and some of the traditions. How was it, you know, as a documentary filmmaker navigating that aspect of it where maybe yes. the women have a certain role in the village and you're a black woman coming in, uh, you know, doing a documentary. Um, were there any issues with the men there and, and trying to navigate? Well, no, I mean, the, the film? Well, the, I mean, it was definitely, again, that I stress that the women work hard because it's like I saw the women working all the time. And so, um, but because the women were working all the time, it was kind of hard to have a, a, a conversation with the women. It was easier uh, for my teacher mm -hmm. because when I, wherever we would go to the village, I would be there to have the conversation about what we were gonna do and you know if we can get permission, but I was surrounded by men the whole time. And you know the women would come and mm -hmm. you know, ask us if we wanna have tea or we would have lunch but the women weren't part of that conversation. They were, I mean, there was like one or two villages where mm. the women were part of the conversation, but for the most part, it was men. And so, you know. What were your thoughts about that? Which, well, at a certain point, that? you I have mean... to go, okay, this is what it is, and you have to honor it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there were times right. uh, that I, you know, said, you know, is it possible <laughs> that uh, we can, you know, have a conversation with the women or just like talk to them and, you know, what's going on. But ex like I said, except for when we went to a village uh, where the Mandinka people were, uh, the women were more present there. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there was, I mean, there was little time, but, you know, we could have a conversation with them, but, but, but for the most part, the women were working. And so they didn't have time to sit down with us to talk. And so you just had to go, okay, so this is, and, this is how it is. And hopefully, you know, if I go back, you know, possibly to do a longer film, I'll be able to so sit down with the women and have a longer, longer conversation about that. Because on the other side of that, um, we didn't see a lot of the dance because the dance, it doesn't happen until the women come back from working in the fields. Mm. You know, so mm. <laughs> it's like, okay, the women are part of the conversation, but the ceremonies don't happen without the women. Right. 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 So the women are still a part of, of, of right. what they're doing, but they have to wait for the women. Wow, I thought that you know, you know, being in America and you know everything we fall for as women, I just found it really interesting. Sort of the dynamics of, of the villages right. that you that you visited while you were um, in Senegal. Another thing you mentioned too, I thought was interesting about you know, like your producer, oh, yeah. you know, liar skin and how people assume she was in charge versus you. And it's interesting because you know that's Africa and even in the continent where you know, uh, of course, they're all different right. colors in, in Africa, but even even there, people had assumptions about you know, who was in charge versus how they look, yeah. which I thought it's was really very interesting. Very and interesting. it was very enlightening and very hurtful at a certain point. But you had to go that they're also seeing because they also get television. I mean, not a lot of television, but they're getting images, you know, from around the world. And the images that they see are that white people are in charge. And so because they associated my light-skinned producer, because some of them even thought that she was white as opposed to just a light-skinned black woman, um, they just assumed mm -hmm. because she was lighter skinned or that she was white, that she was, a per she was the person who had the power and that she was the person who had the money. And in that sense, mm. you kind of, throw up your hand and go, oh my gosh, I didn't think that this would happen here. 
because we're in a country full of people right. who are are African people who are black people. So you would think you would get the opposite, but that was one of the things that uh, mm -hmm. happened far too many times. It happened too much. And so that's why right. at a certain point it's like, okay, it, I just have to say, no, I'm the one and, you know, and, and just, you know, make that correction because it's like, you know, that's where it starts, right. you know? Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I agree. I agree. And, and, and the main thing too, as I was mentioning earlier before you, you know, you came on is the reason, one of the reasons I wanted to start Quality TV is the fact when people think about images um, from America or black people in general, a lot of times it's very negative. And what I really appreciate about, you know, your document and, you know, you didn't see any babies with flies in their faces or, you know, exactly. people really thin or people, you know, people, right. were, people were happy, you know, they, they were, they were happy with their lives, you know, they were doing well. And you don't see the image a lot, you know, when it comes to the content of Africa. A lot of times it's very negative. You know, either right. someone has Ebola, they have AIDS. If they don't have AIDS, right. they're about to die of malnutrition. If, if it's not that, they're about to get shot to death right. from, a, from a child soldier. So it's like, oh, my God, is there anything positive coming out? And we know there are positive stories coming out, but you were able to display well, I that with your documentary. You know, one of the things that, um, you know, I think Black documentarians talk about all the time is that, we have to tell our stories and we're responsible for telling our stories because if not, then you get the opposite view of that. And you do see the war, you do mm -hmm. see the negative part of Africa because that's one of the things that, that was so important to me because when I was there, um, I didn't see you know, those other parts of Africa, you know, the flies and the war, you know, I mean, even though believe me, they have their issues, mm -hmm. but I saw more of the humanity and that was important for me to show the, hum the humane, the humanity of the people of Cosmos, the people of Africa, because, you know, on the one part, you know, even though they may not have so-called as much as we do, but they have a quality of life that in a sense, in my view, that we have lost. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, you saw the happiness mm -hmm. of the people, you saw uh, the culture of the people, you saw the humanity of the people. And that's something that the world needs to see as opposed to seeing this negative, some stereotypical view of what the continent is like. There's more to the continent than, mm -hmm. you, like you said, you know, the children of war, you know, the, the, the thin people, the poor people, that's not how the continent is. Not, that's not what I saw. And I wanted to show what I saw and what right. I felt. And I'm hoping that's what you see in the film, the feeling of, uh, you know, pure joy that, uh, that the people mm -hmm. exude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or missing link, which I think someone mentioned in the documentary, like they feel like once they were able to go to Africa, that missing piece, that I think people who are, people, if you're in America, you, if you're a black person in America, you do feel like right. this missing disconnect to the continent. And I felt like you being there, you were able to kind of put that, that last piece right, of the puzzle right, right, together, right. in my opinion. It's, you know, it's important, but again, you know, I think if we have, uh, you know, more stories and more uh, black filmmakers uh, showing the positive side or that huma humane side of Africa, I think regardless of whether you go to the continent or not, because if we have more stories about our culture and, uh, and about right. that connection, you don't necessarily have to see it because it's like we have people that are telling those stories and they're telling, giving an honest view of what it's like to be on the continent. And that's important. Right. Yeah. Right. I, I totally agree. Um, before we go, I know in the documentary at the time, it was like 2010, you hadn't been back, have you been back since I then? I haven't, and as a matter of fact, somebody asked okay. me that yesterday, just like, when are you gonna go back? And um, I don't mm -hmm. know yet, And but I know I do want to go back, And but I don't, I don't. Of are course, you gonna film I mean, it? At you this point, you know, <laughs> like I said, you know, this project has, uh, you know, it's, put the rubber stamp on that uh, I'm a filmmaker. And of course, you know, I won't go there without my camera. 
And so what's next? What, what projects um, are you working on now? Gee, you know, I'm kind of in that uh, uh, place of, of thinking about what, what my next project is. Uh, I, in the back of my mind, I, the, the next project that I want to work on, um, for me, I was born, uh, my father was in the military. And so um, there, and I want to talk about those children, uh, as I call them, black brats, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, African Americans that were that have were raised in the military, because it's like you know we go to different countries and live in different countries for a long time, and sometimes we feel more welcome when we're outside of the country than we do when we come back home. Um, so I just want to do a project mm. on you know, those, uh, the, the, the people that were raised because my father was in the military for 23 years. So I just want to just like do an expose of what it's like to be raised in the military as a black, as a black child. Right. That yeah. sounds, that is awesome. I think yes. a really great documentary. Yes. Um, right. I can't wait to see it when, when, when it happens. Um, but thank, thank you, you so much, you know, for, for doing this. It is a really great conversation. I hope that, you know, people um, take the time to, to watch the documentary. As I mentioned, it, it, you know, it's on Quality TV. If you're a subscriber, all you got to do is, you know, do a search and, and type in Dancing Like Home and you will find the documentary. If you are not a subscriber, all you do is um, sign up. It's a 30-day trial and then you can watch all the content that you want or you can rent it for 99 cents and while we're in beta. And um, again, thank, thank you so you, much, Deshaun, Joyce, I love it. for thank being... You. Thank you so much. Oh, th thank you. Thank you for your great work. I mean, I, I love doing this because I, I like supporting independent filmmakers who are doing really, really positive content. I mean, that's what yes. it's all about, you know, really changing the face of, of how we're perceived in the media. So um, again, uh, I'm Deshaun Spencer. I am the CEO of Quali TV. And until next time, uh, okay, see you thank later. You. Okay, thank bye you. Bye. Bye.